the jab ban repeal looks to be not all that it appears on the surface so we'll look at that some medical workers are looking at the at the fine print and saying eh, it's not what they say it is and that's i mean that's interesting right and why can canada interfere in venezuela do you remember Guido, Juan Guido. So the G7 backed Juan Guido as an interim uh, alternative government to Maduro's. And Guido was supposed to be is supposed to take over for Maduro because Maduro was not in touch with reality or something to that effect. And that's the position that NATO, I mean, excuse me, the G7 currently still holds. But they got rid of Guido and now they've got another puppet they want to install. And Conservative leader Pierre Polyev is all over that. So that's interesting. I'll show that to you as well. The last to get to, let's get to it. First, we have to talk about the state of the world that we are in. And I've often been talking about recently how nothing seems to be true. Everything appears to be like individual, your own experience, blah, blah, blah. There is no objective truth outside of your interpretation of the truth. And that's bonkers. That's a crazy way to live. You can't live, you can't run a civilization like that if nobody shares any kind of truth together right or if you do share a truth together if the governing party says that's all right right like oh oh is it so this is interesting and it's being noticed and michael says great thinkers are often present in their pronouncements and hannah ardent is one of the greats and hannah says this constant lying is not aimed at making people believe a lie but at ensuring that no one believes anything anymore a people that can no longer distinguish between truth and lies cannot distinguish between right and wrong and such people such a people deprived of the power to think and judge is without knowing and willing it completely subjected to the rule of lies with such a people you can do whatever you want so interesting 1906 to 1975 so very very interesting indeed camus says what's going on is not self-governance what's going on is top-down autocratic control as described by this guy to mark stein on gb news and i thought this was worth it so here we go world bank president former president nicholas stern says we have to look at timetables for ending this so the world bank's telling automakers mm. the car is mm. ending a bank in australia won't mm. even give you a car loan if you want to buy a gas-powered car we didn't vote for this mm. they're taking away our meat our gas-powered cars our free speech and our uh, uh agriculture forcing us to eat insects we didn't vote for any of it. we didn't vote for lockdowns we didn't vote for mask mandates these were all done through emergency decree through unelected bureaucracy that is what the great reset is think back to china one-party rule they don't want any stinking democracy anymore. Well, you meant the world bank. Yes, they only want puppets in place. The puppets can be placed by a democratic or what looks to be a democratic process, but it is not a democratic process. They're placed, the leadership is decided before the election happened. Um, the election is decided with mail in ballots. Uh, people who are popular aren't allowed to advertise on despite rules and laws to back up the rules that state that everybody's allowed to advertise equally we've seen all sorts of egregious election interference from the government from third parties from dark money from all sorts of different ways to stack the deck and to make it seem like the battle is for the vote but the battle is already won by the time we're voting the battle's already won right and, and that may apply to trump too it may it may but who knows we'll see the only i mean either there's a populist uprising and a civil war to get rid of what are the perceived uh, enemies within our gates the communists etc cetera, etc cetera, and you get rid of the globalists and you get rid of all of them right um, or we see what happens with the American election and we see what happens with the Canadian election it looks like Donald Trump and Pierre Polyev and I'm very very sure that Mr. Polyev represents a uniparty similar uh, policies to what, what's happening now, similar to the United Kingdom. They thought they were getting out of bad policies. They're getting worse policies than they had before, but they thought they were voting their way out of it. I think Canada is going to, going to find that perhaps the United States, but again, I'm not, I haven't, I'm not ready to dismiss Trump yet, but I'm, it's certainly on the table. It's certainly on the table. There's a possibility that he's just as crooked as the rest of them, right? And sure, absolutely. That was always on the table as a possibility. But it, again, actions matter a lot. They tried to kill him. So it seems like he's ruffling a few feathers. So we'll see, okay? But, and I can't, I can't get behind the idea that the plan was, listen, sir, I'm just going to graze your ear. Like that's, <laughs> you don't do that. If you care about, if, if any part of the plan is, um, 
to be actioned after that point, like after you put your candidate in front of a bullet, you're not honest, right? So I, I don't think that's a real plan. They tried to kill him as far as I'm concerned, unless I see lots and lots of evidence against that. And so um, it's what's going on is very concerning. And there's a lot of momentum behind it. Money, 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 money. All those billions of dollars going to Ukraine is momentum. All of that stuff is momentum. To stop it is very difficult. Look at Lula in Brazil. Okay. Look at the Biden regime and administration. The 2020 election was stolen from Donald Trump and the United States knew it, but Biden got installed and nobody could do anything about it. So what happens next? I don't know, but we'll see, right? And it seems like we're on a path. We're on a specific path. And the path was laid out pretty clearly by this guy. Bureaucratic, unelected people in an NWO, one world government with laws that have censorship as a cornerstone to make sure that their false reality is not challenged. And like that's scary. And it seems five years ago, I couldn't see that on the horizon. I would say, well, that's crazy town. Like you, that's, that's not happening. And now I can see it as clear as day. And I'm saying, holy smoke, you can't see that everyone? Holy, holy cow, here it is coming right over the horizon there. It's right there. They don't see it. Uh, in other news, which seems like this is a grab bag of governance before we get into the foreign news, but um, fundamentally, Canada didn't used to be like this. We have so much crime in Canada. How much crime in Canada do we have, Mark? That this Brampton man goes crazy lengths to protect his car. He's got four boots on his tires, one, two, three, four. And uh, I guess it's a detachable um, bollard, which he can put behind his car so his car can't be moved without removing the detachable bollard and the four boots. I don't know if you know what I mean by boots, but it's like a something that sits around the wheel and disables the wheel. You can't drive with the boot. And in the United Kingdom, in England, they'll they'll boot your car if you're parked in the wrong spot. And then in order to unboot your car, you have to go pay money. So here's here's this guy. We didn't. No, this is the new security. Like we didn't in our have this in Canada when I was I knew. last year. Look, tire lock, a wheel lock. But I don't even tire lock. Look there. Here, you hear that Brampton accent, right? Oh, a very distinguished or distinct Brampton accent. But yeah, so the the boot, all of that. Yes, I remember when I was forty, and Canada didn't need this kind of stuff. And now that I'm the ripe old age of forty three, Canada needs these boots and things like that. And honestly, to be honest, I was in Costco. I saw Costco. Yeah. We walked in and there, they had the bollard things and I'd seen it on the news and I was like, holy smoke, I wanted to actually find out how much this costs and at Costco and I can't actually remember the price. It was cheaper than I thought, hundreds of dollars anyway, but the installation looked complicated and I thought, well, I don't know how to install that, so I'm not going to get it, but I was interested and a lot of people were interested. It looked like, I wouldn't say they were flying off the shelves, but it's an interesting situation to have a high trust society disintegrate so quickly in front of our eyes and have the population completely anesthetized to it. Like we are laying down, taking it as if nothing is happening and nobody, and if you speak out about it, people get uncomfortable because you're speaking out about it. Weird. Colvinder Kaur, let's talk about the healthcare situation in Canada. And she says, apparently the federal conservative leader, Pierre Polyev, who lives in Ontario, wants us to believe that a provincial conservative government in BC would oppose COVID vax mandates, tyranny, while he's turning a blind eye to the very fact that the conservative government in Ontario has been the one, one of the most tyrannical in the world. Hospitals and universities still impose unethical and unscientific COVID vaccine mandates. And we had one of the harshest, longest lockdowns in the world, all fully supported by Pierre Polyev and CPCHQ, neither of whom have ever condemned the ongoing mandates in Ontario, nor have they con ever condemned lockdowns and called for public inquiry. Instead, CPC, Polyev, and Ford have heavily advocated for the replacement of, of unjustly fired Canadian healthcare workers in Ontario with new foreign healthcare workers. I've been banging the drum about this for years, years. Pierre Polyev says, you know, the solution to this situation, more immigration. And why don't we just raise your taxes, right? Like in Canada, those are the only two solutions to every single problem. <laughs> Can't afford your house? Well, we'll just import some people from the third world and we'll raise your taxes. Can't afford food? Import some people from the third world and we'll raise your taxes. <laughs> You're welcome, says the government. Always judge a person by their actions, says Colvinder Kaur not their hollow words. 
A leader would show humility, apologize to Canadians, and have the courage to act on the demands of the Canadians and all mandates, rehire all workers, demand resignations of TAM, withdrawal of Canada from the WHO, and a fully independent public inquiry into Canada's harmful provincial and federal COVID response. It's time for Canada to begin healing with actions towards transparency and accountability. The other thing that I would add is completely end Big Pharma's funding of Health Canada, remove all bureaucrats that are, have any association with, with Big Pharma. No more funding from Big Pharma, period. You have this operating budget and this operating budget only. And no, you can't do any lockdowns. That's not part of your mandate. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. You don't get to use health as an excuse, comrade. Odessa says, wait, is the NDP Bonnie Henry and Adrian Dix lying about no mandates just for votes? BC healthcare workers are still, are all starting to send each other messages about what the documents are saying. So did Bonnie Henry and Dix and EB not drop the COVID vaccine mandates for British Columbia today? Or do workers have to prove immunity with a forced blood test? Is this correct below? Is there a two-year window when Bonnie knows people were fired more than two years ago? British Columbians need to know if they're being lied to by the NDP gang and mainstream media. P please feel free to post screenshots of all the fine print doc of documents if you are a healthcare worker. And it says, to apply, the applicant must prove their immunity to various pathogens, including COVID-19. That means the jab. I am al also am told there is a two-year window to reapply in the fine print. Snakes. Yeah. And then Odessa says, health minister Adrian Dix says, health workers fired due to previous orders can apply to fill available positions, although they must provide their immune status for certain pathogens, including COVID-19. This is very, this is a very re reputable nurse that was fired and is looking into the fine print now. Kareen uh, says, lifting the mandates today was not a win. It was a move in a chess game that is trying to victimize healthcare workers again. I'll update shortly. So I'll keep an eye on that. We'll let you know. But it seems like a head fake, right? Low information voters will see, oh yeah, well, they they repealed the mandates. Pierre Polyev said it, so it must be true, right? Because, I mean, we're inclined and trained to believe politicians. If they say it, that makes news. Then that makes it into the news. Politicians saying things makes it real, right? Politicians not saying things makes it not real, right? You're, if you're not allowed to talk about it, politicians don't talk about it. If Bernier didn't talk about it, the Overton window doesn't get pulled to that side and nobody talks about it. Replacement immigration, replacement migration, that's a conspiracy theory, right? Uh, the vax doesn't work. That's a conspiracy theory. You're not allowed to talk about it. That's what I mean. And, and so doing all of this stuff controls, controls people. <laughs> making a claim like it's been repealed and people believe it. And then if somebody comes in and says what you believe is incorrect, you, people don't take that as like, oh, thanks for helping me understand that what I understood to be true is not true. They take that as you think I'm an idiot. You think that I don't know what I'm talking about. And it's like, well, you don't. But that's aside. That's not what I thought. What I think is you believe propaganda that is being fed to you on purpose to get you to believe a certain thing. And the propaganda being fed to you is incorrect and it's incorrect on purpose. So I don't think you're an idiot. I just think that you fell for the propaganda and you should be better informed. And then people get mad. <laughs> so I guess I should work on my presentation. But it's interesting how people get personally offended because they've misunderstood something. And the people victimizing us as a society know this, right? And so like, it's very difficult to correct somebody or to help somebody understand something that they've misunderstood because it becomes you attacking them and not you informing them. And it's it's really, it's insidious. It's evil what they've done because you can't really have any conversations with anymore. It's so polarized, right? Like if all of a sudden in during the course of a conversation, uh, men and women come up and you say, well, you know, men can't be women or something like that. All of a sudden, right? Like there's at least one person in that group whose hackles are up, right? Somebody's, somebody's thinking, uh oh, right? We're, we've entered political conversation and it's like, well, actually not. <laughs> actually, we're just talking about basic reality here. But the politics is trying to pervert basic reality and to water it down to the point where they can make you believe anything, right? Like make you make you believe that and and have that belief be a part of you that one, that false thing is true. And two, people telling you that that false thing that you think is true is not true. They're the real danger, right? It's such, it's so insidious and it works so well. Look at where we are, right? And science is supposed to be a repeatable thing that anybody can verify by themselves, right? And the verification now has become, does an expert say it? Yes, verified, right? So the science is satisfied on every level. 
97% of experts agree, right? So that's how science has been perverted. And it's a religion now. I have to believe your religion because of these experts. They, they tell us so. Because I can't, I can't independently verify the claims you're making. But the science says because these people agree. And that's it. It's a church. It's, it's crazy. But within that, within that doctrine, you can make people believe and do anything. Anything. Um, it's, it is healthcare to kill yourself at the end, end of your life. And it's also women's healthcare to kill babies before they're born. Healthcare. Right? Magic. You can make them believe and do anything. Even kill their own children. Even kill themselves. It's crazy. It's crazy. Wide Awake Media says, for goodness sake, stop complying, start rebelling. They're out to get you if you don't resist. Too late. Too late. We've been victimized. Hold it. Here's, here's Christine Anderson and uh, just a little bit snip of this. This is three minutes. We'll play about a minute. Here we go. This whole COVID madness, this so-called pandemic, it was just a test balloon, a gigantic test balloon. Well, for what? you ask. Well, to see how far they could go. To see what exactly they would have to do to get free individuals in a free and democratic society to consent to being forced into compliance. That's what they were trying to establish. That's what they were trying to figure out. And they have, they have figured it out. Trust me. They are much smarter now. The goal ultimately is to transform our free and democratic societies um, yeah, into totalitarian societies. Their goal is to strip each and every one of us of our fundamental rights of freedom, democracy, the rule of law. They want to get rid of all of this. This whole COVID thing had never anything to do with public health. It never had anything to do with breaking waves. It always had to do with breaking people in order to make us a part of a mindless, malleable mass, which they can totally control. And we will be completely dependent upon this globalitarian elite. So I'm really imploring the people and all the peoples around the world. For God's sake, stop giving your democratically elected governments the benefit of the doubt. They are not deserving of that. They are not. Stop rationalizing whatever your government is doing. Try, stop rationalizing and come up with some good intentions. They have no good intentions. Never. Yes. Yes. None of our leadership have done anything to help protect our culture from the invasion that's ongoing in the West. Nobody stood up to help the economy. They printed money and drove this inflation and claimed that was good. And now nobody's holding anybody accountable. And they're saying, you know, all that rumors of Chinese interference, excuse me, proven leaks from CSIS of Chinese interference in our government, nothing to see here. Let's continue on governing until 2025. Jagmeet doesn't have his pension yet, right? Like, why are we allowing it? Because we are allowing it. And we should be able to stop it. We should be. It's our country after all, right? Uh, Justin Trudeau, let's talk about the fires really quickly. We were bringing South Africans in and something struck me as hinky about that. Str something struck me as strange. And everybody says, you know, international uh, interdiplomacy, international helping, et cetera, it's really good. But again, I feel like there's more than meets the eye here. The whole Haiti thing, it seems like Haiti's trying to break free of global governance or something to that effect, or at least domination of a group that's not uh, representative of the wills of the Haitian people. And maybe barbecue is more representative. And Canada's on the other side of that saying, you know, we're going to, we're going to support the, who are the Kuwaitis? No, it wasn't Kuwaitis. It was somebody else. Hold on. Ethiopians. I can't remember which ones. Kenya. It was Kenya. Ha. I had to look it up. But it was Kenyan sources. So like we're back in Kenya and Kenya is going in to break down barbecue and his gangs in order to restore democracy. You see what I'm saying? Like these these people 
are putting us on the wrong side of everything. So now they're saying, thanks, South Africa. And fine, if South, South Africa is coming to help us fight fires, fine. But why don't we have our own water bombers? Why don't we have our own firefighters trained for this? Why aren't we doing back burns? Why aren't we doing forestry management? There's a whole lot of questions. Justin Trudeau is pretending that he's tweeting about this, but he's surfing instead, right? Like, it's ridiculous. And now we're bringing Mexicans here to fight fires? Like, come on, for real? This, is, this isn't helping. This is crazy town. Justin Trudeau says, more than 100 firefighters from Mexico. Are they going to claim, like asylum like i'm concerned here um more than 100 firefighters from mexico have touched down in canada to help battle the wildfires in alberta for their bravery and their so solidarity time and again we're forever grateful thank you my friends edmonton international says helping hands from mexico just landed here at yeg ready to tackle the wildfires burning across our province from the bottom of our hearts we thank the courageous firefighters who've traveled from afar to assist everything is Everything is done to highlight diversity. Nothing is done to highlight our competence. Nothing is done to highlight like, hey, um, we're, we're doing this, 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 and this um, to make sure this doesn't happen again. Nothing like that. It's, it's just, hey, there's a big wildfire and we lost Jasper and it's climate change and you guys are bad and blah, 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 blah. And oh, look at these helpful people from South Africa or helpful people from Mexico. The whole thing stinks to me and I can't quite put my finger on it, but there's a whole bunch of red flags that keep jumping up. And I think to myself, mm, this whole thing is yet another globalist little play that we're watching, a little vignette that we're watching. It's just, no, I'm not, I'm not buying it. It's bullshit. And no. <laughs> Table salt. Let's talk about tax dollars and money and things like that. Table salt says release late on a Friday, right? Friday night news dump. That always happens, right? This is Sunday, but I finally got picked up on it. Um, released later on a Friday. The government of Canada is now paying $55.2 billion, that's billion with a B, in annualized interest payments, more than, more than EI and children's benefits combined. Hmm. EI and children's benefits cost $49.2 billion a year. So that's a lot of money, right? And I'm, I am absolutely convinced that this $49.2 billion a year would do a lot better in the pockets of the people who earn the money. EI, EI. There's got to be a better way than EI. If you have like a family, right? There's got to, the welfare state, they say don't feed the animals for a reason, right? <laughs> Why don't you feel, feed the animals? Because the animals become dependent on that food and they forget how to like scrounge for their own food. And so if you reward sitting around doing nothing. Sure, on the one side, you don't want to have somebody who loses their job and then loses their house and blah, 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 blah. Sure, I get that, right? Like that's, yeah, you want to have some kind of social safety net. But I don't know that having taxpayer dollars shoved into EI is really the most effective way to have a social safety net in 2024. And the children's benefits, again, it seems like they're being exploited by people. Canadians don't seem to have a lot of children. They have a lot of dogs, but they don't seem to have a lot of children. You know who do have a lot of children? Foreigners. And you know who gets big checks with children benefits? Foreigners. So like, I feel like there's ways to cut here that people would be quite happy with, right? And yet, we are, we're, we're not doing that. We're not even having those conversations. And we're paying more than all of those benefits that we can cut for interest payments. Can we just abolish the central bank and print our own money and not worry about interest payments because we're the bank? Like, I think we can do that, right? Why do we have a central bank? What's the benefit of the central bank? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, there's a whole lot. We could talk about the Titanic, but we won't. Let's move on just a little bit. Insurrection Barbie has this. Yesterday, I talked about how the Harris campaign, Democrats more broadly, were using smurfing through Act Blue and names injected into Act Blue as real names, real donor names, but they're fake donor names. And the Harris campaign is working hand in glove with Act Blue because they're using Act Blue's email list injected with the fake names to smurf a big donor's donation or some ill-begotten be, Ill gains, ill-gotten money into their administration through what looks like small donations. So that's called smurfing. And that's what this Act Blue thing appears to be. This is a five minute video, but we're just going to listen to the last minute because he kind of encapsulates it all in the in the wrap up. Um, but it's interesting. And this is being exposed by, um, what's his name? OMG Media. Um, 
O'Keefe. And so it's interesting. Is it going to hold? Is I mean, like Hunter Biden's laptop was a huge friggin' story that should have should have exposed Biden and should have prevented him from becoming the president of the United States. Period. It should have. It really should have. So, like, when I say this is a big story, it's a big friggin story. Like, this is a massive story. People should be arrested for this. This is not like, oh well, like I guess I guess they figured out a way to game the system. No, they are committing crimes here. Okay, like this is not normal, and nobody cares. And that's weird. Like, it's it's notable that the media. They're not really interested in all of this. In fact, it's a bit alt right to you for you to even be interested in all of this, right? Like, holy smoke, already this is a big deal. It's a big deal. It's like Hunter Biden should be arrested. Like Joe Biden should probably be arrested, right? Like this is a big deal. Nobody cares. Nobody cares, Mr. President, right? Nobody cares about this either. Same thing. So weird, but like this is just part and parcel of politics now. So if you know, if you know somebody who's got a billion dollars to throw around and they want to set up a money laundering situation to get me elected? Sure, let's do that. <laughs> I'm kidding. Here we go. Mail is where things get really interesting. If you notice the name at the top, <laughs> FJB. Now you might think that's just a random set of initials, but here's the kicker. The investigators deliberately seeded. That's the F Joe Biden, right? Like that was, um, uh, let's go Brandon, F Joe Biden, that whole era, right? And he's, he's laughing about how like the random set of initials was that. But the meat of the story is now. These initials into Act Blue's database. That's right, America. Tony Saruga and his team inserted tens of thousands of fake donors into Act Blue lists to track their activities. And lo and behold, here's one of the fake names showing up in an official email. This proves beyond a shadow of doubt that the Harris campaign is using these Act Blue lists for their fundraising efforts. They're sending personalized emails to names that don't even exist. But why are they so desperate for these tiny donations? It's not about the money, folks. It's about creating ActBlue accounts to facilitate what appears to be a massive scam. They're using these small donations to create a smokescreen of grassroots support, all while potentially funneling much larger sums through these seemingly innocent transactions. This isn't just clever marketing. So at the beginning of the video, he's talking about um, unemployed people who are making uh, 10 donations a day for a year, like 365 days, 10 donations a day um, of a total $30,000. And they don't have $30,000 because they're unemployed, right? Like there's just names. So it's very, <laughs> it's a huge scam. Like I said, it's a big story. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. So that's weird. Let's talk about the Olympics. I can't believe we're 30 minutes in and we're just getting to the Olympics, but that's okay. That's okay. We've got a whole bunch of other stuff. There was more Canadian news than I thought. So I feel good about the Canadian news section. I was worried yesterday. I was like, oh man, there's not much happening in Canada. It's all foreign. Anyway, it all kind of matters. It's all globalist. It all will impact us. It all is impacting us. So it's good to be aware of it anyway. This is a two minute video. It's well worth it. This is talking about the Olympics and the misstep. We're going we're gonna to go through what they're doing to, to mitigate the disastrous uh, PR that the opening generated because people are pissed. They don't like it. Christians are pissed. Anybody with sense is pissed. Most people are saying, what's the bigger lady got to do with the Olympics? What has she got to do with France? <laughs> what? Basically. And this guy does a pretty good breakdown. So here we go. So the Olympics decided to piss off 2.5 billion people all over the world. They decided it was a great idea to mock every Christian around the world. They tried to replicate the Last Supper with an obese person in the middle as Jesus and a bunch of trans people on the side. Here's the video clip. So there's Jesus. And I'm gonna ask the question, does this look like an athlete to you? And what's curious is what do trans have to do anything with the Olympics? Because last I checked in the Olympic rules, it specifically says that we keep the venues, Olympic village and the podium neutral and free from any political, religious or ethnic demonstrations. So tell me, what's this? This looks like a religious demonstration to me. So they're breaking their own rules. Furthermore, they made it very clear that trans women will not be competing at the Paris Games. Because in 2023, they issued new guidelines that bans transgender women athletes from participating in world athletic events. So why is this hairy chested man a part of the Olympic ceremony? You have the biggest audience in the world and kids watching. Why do we have this form of paganism representing all these athletes where there's 2.5 billion Christians all over the world and you're slapping them all in the face. Now let's check out this clip. What do you see here? What does this have anything to do with the Olympics? What is the obsession? This is completely and utterly unacceptable, especially when it violates their own guidelines. 
the guidelines that they set for every athlete around the world. That's why there's a global boycott happening. And personally, I refuse to watch any single event now. I'm only going to watch it on TikTok. You know why? Because it gets them where it hurts them the most, their pockets. Sponsors are not going to dish out money when they see how vast of a drop that they had in viewership. Those viewership numbers I'm instead going to give to TikTok, which gives them the revenue numbers for advertising, and the Olympics gets none of it. We are no longer going to stand for this woke nonsense. And it doesn't matter what religion you are, this is the time to take a stand and end all this nonsense. Yes, absolutely. Um, one, of the, one of the interesting things that he said, he was talking about the Olympic rules and he said this. Rules? It specifically says that we keep the venues, Olympic Village and the podium neutral and free from any political, religious or ethnic demonstrations. So tell me, what's this? This looks like a religious demonstration. Yeah, the Last Supper is certainly religious. And the other aspect of this is this video, where is it? This, no, uh, I'll find it. Hold on a second. The video on the top here is a video that I shared and was going to be in the show, but they, they censored it and you couldn't play the video because they, it was just something went wrong. But it was the blue transvestite guy with the hair and the beard, the blonde beard, this was the video that was initially being censored uh, across all the inter all the internet, and I said, well, and even on X, and I said X is censoring this video because it shows communist satanic bullshit, and I think that I, I was exactly right. But this is this is that video, and like, utterly is, unacceptable, right? Especially when it violates their own guidelines. Bearded man, the guidelines that they in in drag, and so that's the one that they censored. And Peter Sweden says the Olympics is now targeting people who posted videos of the anti-Christian ceremony with copyright strikes. They know it's a PR disaster for them and they're trying to cover it up. Raise your hand if you're boycotting the Olympics. So the Olympics is supposed to make money. Um, this this guy's scrotum is out. <laughs> that's gross, right? So that's, that's weird, right? If you're at a beach and that happens, somebody comes up maybe and lets you know if you're wearing very tiny bathing suit, which most men in North America here don't, right? We, we were like sporty kind of athletic shorts for swimming. But Europe, in Europe, man, if you're on a beach in Europe, you'd be remiss if you if you didn't tell somebody that their balls were hanging out, <laughs> right? So, but it's not appropriate for the Olympics and it's not appropriate for like that, the opening ceremony. Holy cow, right? Maybe, <laughs> I can't imagine a situation in the Summer Olympics where a man's balls might be hanging out. But certainly not the opening ceremonies. Like that's not the top 10, right? So like Robin Minotti says, as if it was not enough to ban Russia and Belarus, then stage an insult to Christianity for the opening satanic ritual. The Olympics got my account locked for using a few seconds clip of the ceremony from Russia 2014 versus Fr France 2024. And I was going to use this clip as well where the Russian clip showed traditional Russian dancing and traditional Russian culture. And the French clip showed a debauchery and satanic symbology and ridiculousness, right? It's unbelievable. So unacceptable Canadian girl says, if everyone blocks and or mutes the Olympics X count all at once, they get buried in the algorithm and they lose their reach, pass it on. So there you go. If you block them and bury them, and it's the same tactic that the left use against the right on Twitter. They have teams of people, big groups of people who go onto lists that are created. So if you get added to a list, this is why. And then they go onto the list and then they block everybody on the list. And then that impacts those people's accounts in a way that is negative. And so like my account gets gets censored all the time. And even when I was um, campaigning, my account was hugely massively censored and, and repressed because the University of Guelph was organizing this. So students at the university, I don't know if it was the actual university, but the university tried to organize a debate without me. So th they let the communist candidate participate and they let the communist candidate come in and address their political science group class, but not me. So that was Hello everyone, thanks very much for watching. This is just a short version of a longer show. If you'd like to get the whole show, you can go over to canadapoly.com and sign up for a subscription. Just look in the drop down tab for shop and donate and look for subscriptions and you'll get immediate access to the full show. Love to see you. Thanks for watching everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful.